there, Storm fans. Tonight we're playing a deck that's not quite a Storm deck, but it has a few Storm cards in it. We're playing Legacy Goblin Charbelcher combo, commonly referred to as just Belcher. And I have a goal for this video. I want this video edited, cut down, etc. below 45 minutes. Can we do it? Let's find out. So that includes the deck tech. So today we are obviously, as I just mentioned, playing Goblin Charbelcher. This is a deck that plays a single Taiga as its land to reveal to the Goblin Charbelcher. And your goal is to search it out with Land Grant before activating Belcher in most situations. So, why is that good? Well, this Goblin Char Belcher, when you activate it, is going to deal a whole lot of damage. Even if you reveal the Taiga, you only need to reveal 10 cards on average to win the game. I mean, that's pretty good. So, the main objective with this deck is to count to 7. In most games, you're just counting to 7 to cast your Goblin Char Belcher. This deck isn't super resilient in game one to force effects, so force of will, force of negation, those sort of things, but you get to demolish non-blue decks, and that's what this Belcher deck is looking to do. More than ever, Chalice of the Void has disappeared out of the format for a number of reasons, and Belcher really gets to abuse the non-blue decks now because those non-blue decks are usually fairer, and uh, Belcher can do its thing. So this one of Gamble in the main deck is really to just get Echo of Aeons or Lion's Eye Diamond. So this Echo of Aeons Lion's Eye Diamond plan is similar to what we do with the Epic Storm, where it allows you to mulligan extremely aggressively, <clears throat> excuse me, to, you know, more powerful hands. So you don't have to keep loose or questionable sixes or fives. You can go all the way down to two or three or four, etc. Mulligan really aggressively, especially when you have Echo LED in your deck. So that's what I will be doing in this video. I'm trying to not keep bad keeps. Instead, we're just going to use the London Mulligan paired with this card combo. So if you're unfamiliar, Echo Veyance has a flashback for two and a blue. Lion's Eye Diamond says discard your hand at three mana. Well, Lion's Eye Diamond perfectly casts Echo of Aeons. Pretty sweet. And when we go through the deck, it's just a bunch of mana accelerants. So Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Rite of Flame, Tinder Wall, which is sort of a spicy one because you can cast it, cast the turn, and then on your next turn, use it. So this turn, Timber Symbiosis, you know, it is a flip land that you can cast it off of. I split up the lands in this build. I'm not sure if that's actually correct, but it doesn't hurt to try 2-2 two, two instead of 4-0. A lot of lists just run 4 Shatter Skull Smashing. With all the green cards in the board, I decided I wanted to try 2 Symbiosis. But yeah, you can cast your Timber Walls. Uh, obviously, it's good. You have your Desperate Rituals. I've already talked about Land Grant, Seething Song. I almost recorded a different variant of this deck tonight, one that I posted to Twitter probably like a year ago that's based on Mox Opal, and then instead of running something like Desperate Ritual, you would run Grim Monolith. It's just a colorless Desperate Ritual. We also get to run Mox Opal in this deck. I decided to just run a more stock list tonight, but maybe in the future I'll run that Metalcraft version. So we have our eight Spirit Guides, you know, pretty good. They don't help increase your Storm Count for Empty the Warrens, but free mana is free mana to activate this Goblin Charbelcher. All right, so we have our Empty, we have our Echo, we've already covered this in the Lands. The last card is Burning Wish, our legacy staple in the Epic Storm, the heart of the deck. So you can obviously get your Cyborg Echo of Aeons with it, Tendrils if you manage to Echo into just a clean kill. We've already talked about Gamble and what it does in this deck. War Strike is mostly just to finish off your opponents after a Warrens. This card slot might be too cute nowadays, but I'm not sure what I'd replace it with. Like I said, this is sort of just a stock list. Uh, empty, obviously... You have three in the main deck. You want to be able to get it with your Burning Wish. Iron Craig Feet may not make a whole lot of sense, but trust me, it does. So the plan is, if you're going to cast Burning Wish when you already have a Belcher in hand and you're a mana short, instead you can get Iron Craig Feet to go from six to seven to activate this Belcher. It's literally just there to give you that one extra mana. And then Cave In. I'm playing this instead of Pyroclasm. This is a change that I made. And that's because... It's not too often you see Gattateague anymore. So if you're going to run a Pyroclasm, you, you might as well run the free one, especially when you have three main deck Time Twisters to recuperate the card advantage. Haven just makes perfect sense. And then in the sideboard, I talked about running two Symbiosis because we have all these green cards. I'm talking about Xanad Swarm and Veil of Summer. I even considered running four uh, Turn Timber, Turn Timber, and then no Shatter Skull Smashing, but then I decided to split it. Um, because as good as casting these post-board cards are on turn one, you still want to be able to cast Rite of Flame and Gamble. So I think the split's probably fine. Feel free to let me know what you think. That's my short deck tech. I'm not a Belcher expert, but I'm playing it tonight, and I've made a few small adjustments. Hopefully you don't mind them. 
And if you're looking to support or appreciate this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Those are all free things to do to help us, you know, grow as a channel, but also get this video into that YouTube algorithm. I greatly appreciate that. And if you're looking to go the extra mile, you can become a member till the end of August. You get access to all videos early. We're halfway there, but you can still get a few weeks worth of videos early and up front. You get access to our member section of the Discord or middle tier. You get two cyborg guides every single month, 50% off a donation deck. And then our top tier, our combo cabal, which you want to be a part of, you'll get early access to all videos forever early on top of all of those other benefits from the previous tiers. And you get a free donation deck every single month. Make sure to check that out. That is the join button right next to the subscribe button. And if you're looking to support us in any other way, we do have donation decks over at theepicsrim.com slash uh, donation decks. You can even join me here on this channel. So I definitely recommend going to check that out. And then theepicsrim.com slash shop. I've been uploading more and more cards recently. Playing Paper Magic again. Winning cards with throw credit. They're all going directly to the shop. There's an arms chant in there. Japanese foil Abe's. Go check that out. Tons of Modern Horizons 2 foils. And then obviously we have our like Storm Swag. We've had that forever. Pine glasses, shirts, play mats, pen stickers. Go grab them. We have a new mini token pack on the way that will be here in just under two weeks. Check back around September 3rd. We'll have a new mini token pack featuring Ave tokens. Slime time. We'll have them. All right. That's my intro. Let's belch some people. Bryant the Belcher is here. Let's go crush some fools. Welcome to round number one with Bryant the Belcher, Belching Bryant, whatever you'd like to call it. We are on the draw against Young Gert. I don't really remember what they play. We have a turn one Goblin Char Belcher. That said, we cannot activate it, which is sort of, you know, an issue. Uh, and this land grant doesn't actually do anything because we already have Taiga. So this hand, what it's looking to achieve is just put Belcher in a play and then rip a Mana Source to uh, activate Belcher on turn two. I think I'm fine with that. So we're going to try this out. I could always draw an additional mana source as well. Okay, young Gert, let's go. And I've fixed the slider. They're on burn? Oh my. So I fixed the, the sidebar as well. Uh, Tinderwall is a decent draw. So a bunch of you were making me feel bad, if I'm being honest, about having uh, the sidebar wrong, hiding the storm count in the two previous videos. So I've corrected that. Can't be mean to me anymore. I think that's how it works, right? Um, so we're looking to cast spells here. So I'm then going to exile the or the Elvish Spear Guide to cast Tinderwall. And the reason I'm doing it in this order is that uh, if our opponent has a turn to idle on, we're not dealing ourselves damage. So I just pass with Belcher now, we untap and then belch them. So our burn opponent will now have to deal. Alright, well that's not gonna do anything. And once again, there's no punish for this. I can just activate Belcher in our upkeep. So we're going to exile this, exile this. Boom! <laughs> Too easy. Love it. Get out of here. Okay. So do we want to change anything? I don't think we even sideboard here. I think our deck is literally perfect. Let's just resubmit. We're looking to play speed magic. Under 45 minutes, that's the goal. If you're looking to be a part of our community, there's no better place than our Discord channel. You can find that link in the description below. Be a part of the combo community. It's a great place, a lot of great conversation happening in our Discord. Lovely people, even better conversation. Go check it out. All right, we're on the draw for game number two. And this seems like a keep to me. It's turn one goblins. We will have to lightning bolt ourselves with the turn timber to make it happen, but I think that's fine. Old rags. Ooh, what does the seething song allow? I don't know. Yes, I'd like to bolt myself. Exile the simian spirit guide. All right, song, song. Okay. So I could, so I'm gonna grab the empty, but I think I'm also going to grab Goblin War Strike right now. So we top deck a red source, we just win on the next turn. 
Yeah, I think I like that. All right, so will the turn timber symbiosis bite me? It not being a Shatter Skull smashing right now. I would like to see concession. Yes! Match number one. Three minutes. We're going to do it. 45. Here we come. Match number two. We're on the play. All right, so we do have a land grant to go get Taiga. So we can't actually play Beltra on turn one. I think we're supposed to ship this. This hand does nothing, so we're going to ship this as well. Going to five. Beautiful. Okay. And the reason that I put back the rituals is I want to keep the artifact mana in play. That's the goal. So it's a lot like playing the Epic Storm where you want to abuse the permanent nature of the mana sources when you're echoing so that way you're gaining card advantage. Echo. All right, so we're facing a blue deck, Harbinger of the Tides. So they're on Merfolk, kind of spicy. I'm going to concede here because they gave me the information I needed. I don't need to sit here and lose the rest of the game. We can just board in our green cards and then crush them. All right, so Veil of Summer and these swarms. And then I think we're supposed to board out Seething Song. It's just like, it's such a force target that we don't want to risk it getting countered. Uh, and I think we could probably board out Gamble. We're not looking to be as explosive. But then, like, maybe Desperate Rituals. I don't think that those are particularly good here. Actually, maybe I want to keep Gamble instead of a Ritual. I think that the Rituals are kind of stinky. And if I had to keep one Ritual, I think I'd rather be Seething Song. Let's try this out. Speed Magic. That's what we're looking to achieve here. Gotta go fast. Ricky Bobby. If you are unfamiliar, I am a part of the Eternal Glory podcast. Brian Koval, Bill Gallagher, and me. What a lineup. Go check us out. We talk primarily about Legacy. We're pretty entertaining, or at least I seem to think so. We're available on all major podcast platforms, and you will not regret it. Very informational. Go check us out. All right, on the play for game number two. Double Veil of Summer, but uh, this hand doesn't really play magic, so we're going to ship it. So this hand does have a turn one Xandit Swarm, but it doesn't do anything at aside from that, so I don't know if you're supposed to keep this or not. Um, I think I'm just going to ship. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to get rid of Echo. So let's start on the diamond to see what happens. Veil of Summer. All right, we're protected by the summer. All that heat from the Belcher. Uh, does this actually do anything? <laughs> uh, it does not. So we're going to uh, cast this, revealing our hand. Go get Taiga. A Xanid Swarm that our opponent cannot force. And then, you know, try to run to some mana. Okay, so we need to draw another mana next turn to play Belcher. And then we'll need another mana, or possibly two mana after that, just to activate the Belcher. Okay. So this can counter underneath a swarm. Symbol. That's a card that I don't know if I want to cast. I think I'm just going to pass here. Like, it's actually not a bad draw, because what I can do is if I'm lucky enough to um, resolve the bell track and gamble for diamond. Let's cycle this Veil of Summer. Good draw. We really just need one more mana now so I can cast the Seething Song underneath the Curse Catcher. Would really like to not lose to Murph. Getting kind of low. 
I'm just gonna have to pass here, unfortunately. I just need one mana. Beautiful. So they're gonna turn our Taiga into an island. Which is honestly fine. Like, whatever. I don't think that actually matters that much. We're taking uh, four here, going to 14. So I just want to think, if our opponent plays land, another Lord, activate Mutavolt next turn, are we dead? Another Harbinger of the Tides. That actually just might be lethal next turn. Um, three cards in hand. They do have a Curse Catcher. So the Swarm's getting in there. Drew our lovely land. So we're going to need a little bit of luck in order to win this game. We're going to cast Gamble for Lion's Eye Diamond. And then we have a 33% chance of discarding the diamond and a 66.6% chance, 66 .6 chance of winning the game. All right. So, Belch. Gamble. Now we go get diamond. A. Belch. Love it. Get out of here, merfolk. Now we just have to get game three. I think I'm fine with the current config. I don't know if I'd change anything here. I could do another gamble instead of the seething song, but having one of each actually just won us that game, so I think I'm going to leave it. No need to change things up too much. If you're thirsty like I am, there's nothing better to grab a drink out of than an Epic Storm pint glass. Go grab one. Game three against Merfolk. This hand is a Lion's Eye Diamond short of being the absolute nuts. I'm going to keep this because we do have a gamble. I mean, we have to get a little bit lucky, I think, to not discard the diamond that we want to gamble for, but this hand's definitely a keep. It's a turn one echo with Veil backup, and that's just, like, a hand that you don't mulligan. When it's on five cards after the island. Cage! Wow, I can't echo now. Oh, that's brutal. So the new plan becomes uh, the empty. Ooh, that was a good draw. Okay, so I think we're going to imprint the veil. Okay. That's good. So I copied the list uh, from somebody in the Discord primarily. And then I made adjustments, but now that I'm playing, I'm sort of wondering why we aren't running Force of Vigors in the board. Not that I would have boarded it here, but it's just like in general, like it seems like I heard we, that we would want. So what I could do here is I could pitch ESG, or I'm sorry, SSG Gamble for Diamond, hope to discard the Echo, which is sort of a tall ask, and then um, empty, or I could pass. So another thing I could do is pedal right of flame, floating a red, and then hmm. So I just want to like reduce my odds of discarding the diamond or the wish. But I need both of these, I think. All right, we're gonna get wild. I'm just gonna do it. Discard Echo. Shit. All right. So if we draw Belcher, we're only a mana away from winning the game. I mean, not the best, but. Wrong discard, or wrong action spell discarded to the gamble. Looks like they're passing. 
Okay. Sure. That didn't matter. I guess we could also look to potentially hard cast this echo, which isn't something I was thinking of until now. I mean, I feel like we're pretty far away from hard cast echo, but it's a possibility. Okay, curse catcher, that's going to make that a little bit more difficult. Okay. We're still on the draw Belcher plan at the moment. Because Belcher would just be the easiest win. If we draw Belcher off the top, I think we actually just win the game. Assuming that they don't try to curse catcher or right off lane. We're going to take three here going to 17. Another island. There aren't two cards. Do they have Oracle? I'm about to get blown out. And then they conceded. What? Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, I'll take the free win. We had nothing coming. Wow. We would have died to literally anything. But I'll take it. We're 2 0. See you in match number three. B -b Belcher! This is like a classic Belcher hand right here. Just a ton of goblins on turn one off Burning Wish. Let's go. All right. Are not a land I wanted to see here uh, because that most likely means they're playing blue. And if I remember correctly, our opponent's actually a Doomsday player. So uh, this is probably going to be a tough one to win. Okay. Do I really want to show our opponent that they only have to counter the Burning Wish? All right, I'm going to see if I can get them to daze a tender wall. All right, so that resolves. What about a seething song? Okay. Burning Wish. So I would like that this resolved and then we could show them land grant. I'm just going to grab empty. Okay, so we're at least activating, or I'm sorry, activating, casting empty here. 16 goblins. Okay. I feel like I played that reasonably well. Just hope that we're not dead here. Okay. Oh, they're in TS? That's wild. <laughs> uh, it's like the first time I'll be rooting against my own interest here. So I think our, our best draw is another Burning Wish. This is Peer into the Abyss. Okay. That's not a good sign for me. So we're going to deal them 16. They'll go to 2. So if they have a fetch in their hand as a mana source, they won't be able to cast Peer. So they... Can't use a fetch. They're also on an older list because I don't play Volk anymore, so they're not playing white. All right, so they're at two. Am I dead? Just going to hit that F6 button and watch the show. Start for it. Okay. That's six. Ah, oh, they have it. I've lost two games total over in like over like it's got to be like over two thousand matches at this point after resolving peer. So and our opponent still has a land drop too. Oh, they're not on TS. They're on just like straight um, peer into the abyss. That's interesting. They're just on like the peer deck. Okay, so I'm going to board in Veils now, now that I know that they're not TES. I mean, you can cast your attendees. Yeah, Veil just seems like a no-brainer now. Okay. Luster Storm. Is that what I spread? Brainstorm, okay. 
sure. This could also just be like Burning Ant, maybe? Might just be Burning Ant. All right, so we definitely want the Veils. Maybe cut the Desperates? Maybe we could board out empty. Yeah, why don't we just board out empty? We don't really want to be act or casting empty in this matchup anyway, so I think that's fine. And if I some if I really want to, we can board and gamble as an, an additional action spell. Maybe board out a desperate, so that way uh, we can gamble for echo if we need it. I think I like that. Just so that way we do have an extra action spell on our deck after boarding out three of them. All right, let's go. Can't keep. Uh, this is also a mulligan going to five. Going to four. Uh, none of these are keeps. Three. Two. I guess we keep. Like, there's no, I guess I could, um, all right, so this is the plan. We are going to just pray to rip, uh, Lion's Eye Diamond. We're just casting in Tomb here. We have four diamonds in our deck. Let's go. Do your thing, opponent. They've opened up a Nut's Hand. Okay. That was not a diamond. I don't have any regrets, by the way, about mulliganing those hands. None of those hands were keys. Okay. Boo! Boo! I think that this is just Ant. But Ant usually doesn't run Tarn. Like, they're a Misty deck. One's casting their spells. I guess it is Ant. Okay. Red four now, so they have lethal. All right, so we just lost Ant, unfortunately. So we're two and one. I feel like this is a matchup we probably should have gotten, but oh well, not the end of the world. Run number four coming right up. We have lost the die roll. That's unfortunate. So I don't know what our opponent's playing. Like I said, I wasn't looking up what any of our opponents were playing, or else I probably uh, wouldn't have emptied against the Ad Nauseam deck. So it will be interesting to see what we're facing here. Uh, this hand is technically a turn one empty, but I think we keep this. Okay. With St. Meyer. That's uh, not a good sign for the, the goblin hand. Or is it? Oh, it is. They're on burn. We got burned twice. All right. So we can probably just start off by revealing our hand. All right. So let's exile this to cast the Tinder Wall. Um, so this is only eight goblins. That said, I can get War Strike. Yeah. So another thing I could have done with this hand is I could have gambled for LED and then discarded the Echo. But I feel like this is likely going to get the job done. So Spear, okay. So we're going to 15 now. Do they attack? Burning Witch. So I would go to 11. I'm trying to think. So if I block like just one, take seven. So I can't even War Strike next turn. 
Hmm. Another burning wish. I'm gonna block one. If I'm gonna block one, should I just block two? Like, wait, is this just better? Yeah, I think I like this. I understand that it's two less damage off the War Strike, but that's fine. And then I have this backup Burning Wish to grab Echo or Gamble. So we'll grab War Strike. I did not think I was actually going to cast War Strike this league, and now here we are. So now our opponent has to at least spend one um, burn spell or leave back to a spear to not die, or else uh, we have a clean lethal. Eat that messy lethal. Right, and they're going to leave back the Swiss spear. Damn. So they're at six. If I swing out, they could, in theory, maybe win this. But if I leave one back, they would go to two. I feel like it's probably just best to leave one back, actually. Because the difference between two and one doesn't really exist, I think, here. Granted, they do have the fiery islet, but I don't think that actually matters that much. So I could leave back two. They would take three down to three. I don't think that's correct. So here they would block take four if they try to burn one. Yeah, I think that this is right. So I'm just going to have six now. All right, so right now they would go to two if they don't cast any burn spells. Combat math. I mentioned this on the Eternal Glory podcast before, but uh, like in 2012 or maybe 2013, I missed the top eight of a Star City Open because I was so bad at combat math that I couldn't figure out. It was like 16 goblins versus just a true name, and I messed it up so badly that I didn't top eight. And to fix that, I just started playing a lot of limited and got really good at combat math. So if you're ever struggling to do that sort of thing, just start playing lots of limited. You'll get better very quickly. So we're at 10. Well, I'll block so that way you can't fire blast me. Okay. And we could echo if we want here. But instead, I think we should just get our opponent dead. We could also tendrils. Okay, so we've gotten game number one over burn. Like in round one, I'm just not going to board. I think our deck is already perfect. You heard it. Already perfect. No need to cyber. One uh, cool thing here is that both Reverend Silence and Caven kill Eidolon without a, the Eidolon dealing you damage. Fun fact. I think it's kind of funny. The second reminder, if you're looking to support us, no better place to go than the epicstorm.com slash shop. Tons of new card singles, Modern Horizons 2 cards, Japanese foil goblin tokens for your empty the warrens. Go check it out. You won't regret it. And it supports us. Theepicsfirm.com slash shop. Alright, so game number two. We've opened up double land grant, which is kind of stinky. So, but the good thing is that this hand does turn one empty. So we're gonna keep this and just hope that it's good enough. And you can actually cast land grant for extra storm, which I do like. All right, what is this? Rift Bolt, sure. Ooh. So let's go get Taiga. Okay, so now we can imprint this land grant. Desper Ritual. Empty for 10 goblins and then echo. Okay, spin that wheel. Uh, what does this do? 
So I can put Belcher into play, and I can also just uh, Burning Wish for Goblin War Strike. So I'm trying to think if I... I think I'm not supposed to cast the Seething Song this turn, because if I just untap and go Belcher, I win. So the best thing our opponent could do here is have a Sweeper, and Seething Song Belcher just beats a Sweeper too. All right, so we're going to take a Rift Bolt to the face. Yeah, we like have a couple different wins next turn. So we can just belch our opponent. We can also uh, Burning Wish for Goblin Wars. I am not going to uh, copy that Chain Lightning. You got it. Another Belcher. Okay. Ugh. And just like that, we are now three and one over burn. Round five coming right up. Round five. Let's get it. I'd love to four one with Belcher. Yeah, let's do it. This hand seems great. Opponent's taking a mulligan here. So the, one of the awkward things about Seething Song is how it's such a good force target. Because right now we need to go up the, the ladder here. We need to go Seeming Spirit Guide, cast Rite of Flame into Desperate Ritual into Seething Song. And we really need that Seething Song to resolve. Rite of Flame. Desperate Ritual. Seething Song. Diamond. All right, so we can cast this Burning Wish and just grab Echo. And then for our second Burning Wish, we can empty. Okay. Goblins are forever. This is where they just go to like Crop Rotation Tabernacle or something. I don't know what this opponent plays, but uh, it's certainly a way of punishing them. But uh, this is a fast way to win the game, which is what I'm looking to do. Not crop rotation tabernacle off under round C, so that's a good start. Okay. Crash. All right, so I would guess that they're on doomsday right now. Okay. Learn TS. Okay. Is this an echo? It is an echo. All right, so we need our opponent to fizzle. I'm, I'm so torn right now. Am I rooting for me or am I rooting for the epic storm? I want to see a concession. Yes! Got game number one. <laughs> They had the arms chance. So they're on a new list. Um I don't think we board. I think we just resubmit. Alright, so we're on the draw for game number two against the Epic Storm. We have a turn one belcher. I think we keep this. This doesn't win the game on turn one, I don't think. Uh, so we have one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana. If we draw a mana here, we can actually Burning Wish for Iron Crag, and that would give us seven. That does it. So as long as our opponent doesn't have silence, we win. All right, I think that they have it based on this. I'm wondering if I should just play Belcher. Because if I cast Belcher here, I have a win through Silence, or through Chant next turn. Yeah, I have a feeling that they actually have the Chant, so I'm just going to play Belcher. They're thinking about chanting me right now. Yep. 
I played that so well. <laughs> yeah, I've been chanted. How dare you, Brancusi? That is the wrong Orms chant. There's a correct Orms chant and there's a wrong Orms chant. The correct one is from Plane Shift. Get that judge trash out of here. All right, so we need to not reveal our Taiga. I shouldn't have even said that out loud. Like, if we lose this game, it is literally my own fault. We four won! And this match was only five minutes, which means I think that this was under 45 minutes. I'm pretty excited. I hope you enjoyed Bryant the Belcher, Belching Bryant, whatever you like to call this league. Subscribe and have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.